Hey, this is Wally, and you're listening to the Young Justice Files on the Whelmed podcast, or whatever. Whelmed? Dick, did you make him say that? Recognized, Emily of Arden, D, 1, 2. Recognized, Joe Moniak, D, 0, 5. Hello team, and welcome, fittingly, to Intel Update number 16. I'm Emily Buza, and I'm here with our incredible producer, Neil. Hey everyone. My wonderful co-host, Rich, uh, wasn't able to make it for this Intel Update, but we're wishing him a continued happy hiatus uh, off taking a break from the internet and all that it entails. But before we dive into all of the DC fandom content that we are so excited to discuss today, I just want to check in with you, Neil. What's been up with you? How have you been? We haven't heard you behind the microphone in forever. Yeah, uh, I still have a microphone, so that's step one. Uh, Step two, I think at this point I'm dangerously close to having successfully... Not, I mean, funded a Kickstarter, but then given those Heck things yeah. to someone. Um, so it's in the very final stages of layout, ordering some extra art, and then um, we should get, be getting a proof copy pretty soon. So that's just weird. So I made a book. You made a book. Do you want to tell people what that book is? The Ultimate Guide to Hair, a supplement to die for, D-Y-E. Um, so it's for your fifth edition game, all related to hair things um it's it (laughs) goes between like really hilarious as you can imagine and then also horrifying like there's not a lot of middle ground (laughs) yeah so i don't i I continue to do all other things that i used to do so i still do the dungeon masters block and uh dmnastics at this point we did go out to our own feed so if you're wondering where that is on the rare off chance that these two Venn diagrams cross, uh, (laughs) we are on our own feed now. It's not that rare. I feel like there's probably some overlap in in that Venn diagram. That's true. Uh, This side of that diagram, I feel, is bigger, but the D&D one is getting larger all the time. (laughs) But I also want to throw it to you. What have you been up to? Well, I've I've been surviving in the current state of the world that we've been in, so I... (laughs) I thank everyone who listens to us for their patience because I've had like multiple weird health things going on that have taken up a bunch of my time, which means that podcast hasn't been happening, but we're trying to get back to it. And thank you all for being so patient with us. But in the meantime, as we get whelmed back on its feet for all of you, I've also I'm in an audio drama now. Uh, Yay. That those of you who follow me on Twitter may have heard about. Uh, But I'm in a show called Arson, that is uh, A-R-S-E-N, not the act of lighting things on fire, but kind of. It's complicated. Contextually, yeah, my entire state is on fire. So uh, when I did first read that, my brain was just like, oh, no. And then I was like, oh, there's an E. Okay, breathe in, breathe out. I mean, it's, it's maybe the name of a character. It's also maybe the act of stuff gets lit on fire in this show sometimes. It's complicated, uh, but Arson is a uh, fantasy audio drama podcast uh, about, I'm trying to think what, what our official summary is, but uh, it's it's about fairies, uh, but like cool warrior fairies, and that's, yeah, I play, I play a member of the fairy royal guard named Nyx, and you can hear me be British and a fairy in Arson. That's so good. Uh, it's very, it's fun. The baseline makes me think of ElfQuest. Like, if you're given kind of a brief overview, you will misconstrue what ElfQuest ends up being. That's the same thing. It's like, it's about a bunch of fairies. But wait, there's more. It's kind of like, it's a bit of like urban fantasy because it's about like a girl who finds out that her her parents were fairies kind of thing and was like, like lived her whole life thinking she was a human. And then there's some like stuff with like the other fairy world that comes in and it's it's a whole thing i think that's okay. all i think i'm allowed to say okay. all of that like because okay. i <laughs> where we're recording at this point is far beyond what's been released so my brain is like well this yeah. happened I'm like i can't say that uh yeah welcome to the wonderful world of being a voice actor <laughs> no yes. matter how indie you are you're like wait what's been released 
<laughs> what am I legally allowed to talk about? Those NDAs are strong. But yes, if you would like to hear a fun, I say fun in quotation marks because it is kind of a drama. It's a it's an audio drama. I mean, if you would like to hear a fantasy audio drama where I play a fairy and you're fine with some PG-13 content as a warning, since I know we do have some young, young listeners, you know, there's a, there's a, like a rating warning at the beginning of every episode. So you'll, you'll know. But as a heads up, Arson, check it out on your local podcatcher. Which we will certainly have a link in the show notes. I know that because I'll be the one putting it there. Along with like Neil's Kickstarter stuff, if that is available mm-hmm. to buy anywhere post Kickstarter. Uh, it will be. Um, right now you can buy it through, and I guess just the learning process of all of that nonsense has been extreme. Like I created an LLC through a lawyer because there were some issues with the name I wanted to use, figuring out how to get all of the f- funds to go through the right way, then doing backer kit so that it could like fund and give to people, and then figuring out uh, shipping and ordering. Yeah. <laughs> Enough of that, though. So... Uh, despite the fact that we're still kind of on our own little strange hiatus space as we get back on our feet, and we have recorded some things to everybody listening, we promise, we just haven't gotten them out to you yet, Uh, because we want to have a nice chunk of things recorded before we come back so we're not Mm -hmm. floundering to keep up. Yeah, no fits and starts, just all go. We're just we're just getting a backlog ready for everybody. Uh, We actually have quite a bit to talk about this time around, because DC Fandom happened uh just like two weeks ago now at the time we're Mm -hmm. recording this week and a half and some things got released announced referenced in the uh young justice audio play season 3.9 audio play yes that 3.9 i have thoughts but we'll we'll get there so let's let's jump into that do you would you like would you like me to start neil or would you like to start Go ahead. That's the way the outline is, and it will make it easier for me. So go <laughs> right ahead. Because when Emily writes the outline, Emily's notes go first. Yes, they do. This is just how things happen. So I want to start off by just giving a general shout out to all of the actors for playing multiple roles and switching between them on camera seamlessly, because that's tough. As an actor, that's tough, and it's amazing to watch them do it like live. Because generally that's not what you would do in a studio, so it's just kind of amazing seeing them do that and having it work as well as it did. Uh, it it blew my mind because there are times where you can see. I mean, we'll we'll probably just need to say this up front. It, it's clear from all the context we have that this was recorded sometime earlier, yeah. and then it was heavily edited. But like you can see that you can visually see those hard cuts, which means you can see when they're not happening. Yeah. So like. Crispin doing the different Harpers because on one hand, like you could do a Harper and then you could do Captain Boomerang. But that's that's a pretty notable change where he's literally just jumping line to line of the same person, but not the same person. Oh, it's wild. Uh, And yeah, like you can see some of the cuts, but there is so much of this that you can see is clearly just not edited beyond like switching between actors. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's kind of amazing to see those ones where you're like, Crispin just said like five lines back to back that are all five different characters and didn't pause. <laughs> and speaking of the editing, I do also want to give out give a shout out to whoever the editor was for this, who made sure to include cuts to members of the cast trying not to laugh when other characters had to do ridiculous things like just scream or make monkey noises for an extended yeah. period of time. Well done, Nolan North. Well done. Yeah, yes. just yeah. The edit, whoever edited this, and I would, I would assume it would have gone back probably to YJ people. Maybe, maybe not. I, I mean, I, I have no idea. But yes, they, it was very, very well put together. Whoever you are out in the in the Warner Brothers workforce who got to edit the Young Justice panel, thank you. <laughs> also, to. <laughs> Because this is me and everyone knows what I focused in on during this audio play. Oh, really? We got Super Martian timeline clarification. Mm -hmm. And I tried very hard not to squeal about it while listening or on Twitter. Because I tried to keep my Twitter spoiler free because I knew some people didn't get to see it immediately. Yep. 
Uh, but just to, to break that down for everyone who may not have been paying as close attention to this as I was, what do you mean other things happened in this audio play? Not at all. I don't know what we're talking about. So we got confirmation that they moved in together into the apartment that is above Snapper Carr's house that we finally got like canon clarification that that's mm. the situation, I feel like. Yeah, it would have only been inferred. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's never technically stated in season three, but it has been a while since I've rewatched season three. So maybe it gets called out and watch someone will pull up the clip of me saying this during another episode. But I thought it was funny that they like kind of threw that in there because it felt like enough people had probably season three been like, why is Snapper Car there? That they're like, well, just just put in the line. <laughs> yeah. So they're renting the apartment, but have use of the house because there's definitely scenes out on the porch and inside the home, but they're renting the apartment above the garage. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sure. It's a it's a two floor home. They just have the second floor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but they moved in together literally the day they graduated college, and that's hacking cute. And it implies to my uh, super Martian shipper heart of many years that they got back together sometime post the Torch Songs comic while they were still in college, uh, but waited to move back in together because they were taking things slow, and that is adorable, and I love it. And I will just mm-hmm. sit here in my super Martian feelings forever. I agree. I accept that. because Well, yeah, because I was trying to piece that, that same timeline back together because you have to think when. And it's a, it starts to become a little bit more difficult with these two because you have Connor, who's going to always look 16. So that's going to throw me off. Then you have Miss Martian, who's going to look like kind of anything she wants to. Um, and so then I was like uh, trying to do all the math in my head. But yeah, that's your spot on. Uh, but I will throw out that I... Like, when thinking about this post, post listening to the thing, I feel like I would absolutely read, like, the, oh my god, they were roommates fic that was, like, them moving in together platonically and then just being very bad at being platonic. Especially the idea, because I, I read that note, and then I thought about it in that space of, like, like you put up, like, a partition, is it, like, a sheet hanging in the middle? Because it's really only one big room. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, I forgot how small... <laughs> This is more of like a hypothetical. Yes. Not this specific apartment. An apartment. Uh, super mad. And then she always functions off of TV tropes. So she has a duct tape line in the room. You can only stay on your side. Uh, it's chaos and it's adorable. <laughs> yes. So continuing on with my nonsense, my particular brand of nonsense before we move into other things that did happen in this audio drama that we will need to get to. But I will throw out, this was a main topic of discussion in our, in the whelmed group chat uh, post watching this audio play, which was that I was part of this uh, storyline for anybody who didn't see it uh, was the discussion of the Connor and McGann are going somewhere for some reason and everybody's saying goodbye uh, and it's all very vague and i was 100 percent convinced uh that they're they were heading to mars for their wedding which will inevitably get them embroiled in like martian revolution that's been hinted at this was my theory until rich wonderful rich howard pointed out that nobody in the entire audio play ever says marriage or wedding or anything like that. They don't. (laughs) Which led to many theorizing uh, when I was talking to Ariel Horn, friend of the show, about things uh, post-DC fandom. She theorized that it could be either like a let's go to Mars and finally end space racism, which, heck yeah, That would be rad. I'm up for it. Or uh, the let me finally introduce my Martian family to my Earth family before we get married, which also good, though I've always kind of felt that the Mars mission post season two would have involved that on some Mm -hmm. level. Yeah. But that's me making assumptions about timelines. Um, But I was thinking the same two things, because what if. And I don't want to say this because I feel like it's going to make you angry. But what if they had already gotten married and then they're having to go to Mars to, like, have a Martian ceremony? I'd be okay with that. Like, it doesn't, like, you're like, this will make you mad. I'd be okay with that if we get to see something. 
I would like yeah. to see some version of a wedding, which I know like everyone has been like, well, if there's like more than a two year time skip, like we probably won't see it or whatever. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> Give me flashbacks. <laughs> Give me anything. Yeah, no, I've been th- I've been thinking about it and trying to piece together what it might be to maximize my nonsense for a moment. I think just the idea of them going to Mars for a wedding would just be really heckin' cute uh, because McGann loves her family and Gar's coming and so is Martian Manhunter, which seems like a very specific team to be going on this. And Superman mm-hmm. can just zoom to Mars. Like, that's a thing, right? Superman can fly in space. It's fine. <laughs> Yeah, Bioship. Uh, and it's it's good. Uh, and I'm here for it. Though the late night all caps theory that I texted to the whelmed group chat with no context other than I was re-watching the audio play and it hit me and I needed to all caps type was simply, oh my God, what if she's pregnant? With no context and nothing to back up this theory beyond my screaming. Science. So, like, I don't. So much science. <laughs> so much science. This has come up more than once on this show. There is an episode somewhere in our back catalog of of Rich questioning whether or not they could even have kids, and me going off for a bit. So, y'all can listen to that rant if you'd like to. And this is, of course, like lowest on my theory list for plausibility, but I'm throwing it out there. I know a lot of people have been having a bunch of different theories about this because it's the one thing, one thing, there's probably like 10 vague things in this audio play, but it's the one thing that's super vague and that nobody's really sure what the answer is going to be yet. And I know some people have been worried of like, they're like leaving Earth forever or like they're going or leaving the team or something, but that doesn't really fit the tone of this to me. Like, I feel like that would be a much bigger deal than between seasons. Two of our main characters just kind of leave. Yeah. I think this is a temporary trip. Yeah, and you don't and some of the stuff is, and I hate that my brain goes there more than I like, I guess is a good way to say it. That, like, there are just production things and promotion things. You don't bring this group together to not have this group probably be the main group for season four. And you don't lose the context of like the things that Greg has said about it being more focused on and I like quote the original team. So the one thing that I will say that I just want to get it out of the way. And then I don't know if it ruins everything or makes it better, but this is 3.9, which is one year later. It is not season four, which could also be one year later. There's nothing stopping us from an additional amount of a time jump between what we saw in the prize and season four, episode one. That, yep, that's always true. And you never know. They could be doing 10 million tricky things. Yeah, because it could be back from whatever this is. Well, we just have to wait and find out. It's the frustrating thing where we can theorize for forever, but we're never going to we're never going to know if we're right until the season happens. Uh, but yeah, no, the whole reason that my ongoing theories went from like, oh, well, they're clearly just going to Mars to get married was that Rich just kind of came into the group chat and was like, they never say marriage. And then we just went off on a theory spiral Mm because they don't. They're like, it's the biggest day of their life and it's a new journey. And and I'm like, well, that seems super vague in hindsight. (laughs) Yeah, the Aqualad line helps a little bit or Aquaman. Sorry. Um. My bad. He upgraded. But we saw this happening before before Connor did. That kind of thing. Is the context that focuses it on their relationship, but at the same time, is it some specific Martian thing that needs to happen? Possibly. Yeah, because everybody else knows Martian culture so better so much better than Uh Connor. Yes. We they all they all went to their Martian class and Connor was just out that day. Yeah, he was he was learning other things from the genome. <laughs> he was learning how to be a person uh, and didn't learn all about space. But yes, I agree that that's one of those lines that kind of makes you be like, OK, so this isn't OK. Hmm. We just put it up on like the red string cork board. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Ta- we're going to figure it out eventually. 
but other other various things outside of my nonsense. I will take a take a breath, take a break, take a step back from the Super Martian wedding that is all I want from season four. <laughs> Season four could be 10 minutes long and it's just uh, a scene oh. of Connor and McGann's <laughs> wedding and I would be happy. <laughs> uh, I'm only kind of exaggerating. Yep. Uh, but to get back to everything else, they, I found the fact that they had to give reasons for why certain characters weren't there that felt a little bit like sometimes voice actors are busy. <laughs> But I loved it. I think it's fun when they like write around that and do something. They're like, Night Wings, busy. Because <laughs> Jesse mm-hmm. McCartney's not here. But yep. like, I loved the the kind of sh- joke line that's like uh, Forager saying that he wishes Violet was there to help Leon find her voice because they're both voiced by Zara. Yes. Oh, I loved it. And I was like, that's cute. That's fun. Uh <laughs> But there was a line at one point where I forget who it was. One of the villains says, like, you're supposed to know a gorilla isn't a monkey. And I was like, both I and Superboy feel feel called out because I feel like Superboy makes that mistake multiple times in season one. And I think I made that mistake during one of our comics commentary episodes. Mm. Yep. (laughs) So this is more of a flashback to calling myself out on something. Yeah, Ter- Terrence Tuppence gave us that one. I'm like, I get it. I get it. We're all bad at things. I don't know why I, that would... There are several things in this that like made us laugh a little bit that I think was like... There's some line later that I remember Rich pointed out where like Aquaman tells Black Manta, like, your helmet isn't as protective as you thought it was and blah, 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 blah. And like Rich back during... Season two or it was season two, I think, uh, Mm -hmm. talked a lot about how like clearly all of the Black Manta Trooper helmets are super ineffective because like Nightwing takes them out with one punch. Yeah. Uh, And I was like, I feel like, I don't know, (laughs) this just is hilarious. Just little things that we laugh at just because we've made jokes about them in the past, too. (laughs) Yeah. The idea that one punch with a helmet on would knock a person out is just. It was, That's a bad Rich helmet. Just could not abide. Could not abide by that. Rich Howard, uh, registered nurse, uh, could not abide by that kind of ineffective helmet use. But other things, I love. I, I love that we continue to let McGann be the super therapist that she was meant to be. Apparently, it's great. I love that it's an ongoing world detail and plot detail. Uh, that she's just helping people. It's good. I also, lo- <laughs> oh, this is so dumb, but I really love the exchange between Connor and McGann that essentially boils down to him being like truth, justice in the American way and McGann mm-hmm. being like, it's, I love you. <laughs> yes. It's just adorable and I'm trash and it's cute. But related to that same conversation, Calder has a line where he says, Waller knows the team's secrets. And like in season three, I feel like all that was implied was that Waller, that Amanda Waller would like reveal the existence of the team if things happened. I may be remembering that episode wrong, but I feel like in that it was kind of only like if you try to expose the Suicide Squad will expose the team kind of thing. And now it seems like that's some like OG season one style like team secrets personal information stuff but maybe i'm reading too much into a line but again this is young justice where that's all we do no i it did feel like a little bit more because in the original line it did feel like well if you tell about me i'll tell about you yeah this definitely felt a little bit more sinister and part of it would most likely be waller just doing it to have that like in her back pocket and be ready to just be awful but who knows this could be leading into some season four stuff like we've talked about like greg has said i think greg has said that like season four is going to be more focused on the original team whatever that means Mm -hmm. uh so who knows this could be kind of leading into something with that i would very much enjoy some like 
original season one team drama secret nonsense uh because that's always fun but we'll see (laughs) will will harper's plan is the loopiest of loopholes and i love it and i love that in this serious show that can be very dark and have very dark things happen the solution of the day was i'll pay you all a dollar and Mm -hmm. we bow hunter security (laughs) No one said Bow Hunter Security can't stop the Suicide Squad. Yep. And part of part of me wondered in that moment if Calder will still be no, because Calder stepped away as not being in charge of the league. Yeah. But then like what is his role in the league? Because that just feels like a big decision for him to be like on board with. I and I know maybe some of it's the context. And this is all canon. So you do still need to think of it in that way, but I was just like I really don't know that Calder, like, it feels, okay, Calder, you're in. Calder does what he wants, man. Yeah. Calder is like, I follow the rules until it's something with his friends, and he's like, I do whatever. Mm Mm-hmm. Team mom until everybody needs him to do something ridiculous. And the ongoing, like, some of this is just hilarious, and I love it. Like, I love that the audio plays that Greg does sometimes are just really funny for the sake of nonsense. Uh... And having Crispin have to do a back and forth arguing about the merits of boomerangs versus arrows debate for several lines where he plays both characters was peak comedy. (laughs) I quite enjoyed that bit of nonsense and that the consensus was that Batman thinks boomerangs are cooler than arrows and Batman is the deciding vote here. (laughs) But they're but they're batarangs, not boomerangs. Same-ish thing. But I have a note. I have two notes, actually, to to throw over to you, Neil, who I feel may know more about this than me. Uh, and I'm sure Rich probably would know more about it than either of us. But perhaps you'll definitely know more than I do for this. Um mm-hmm. I had to pause a couple of times to make and like turn on the closed captions to make sure I was hearing this right. But it sounds like the current warden of Bell Rev is uh, Warden Economos. And I don't know who mm-hmm. that is. And I think I briefly Googled it. But do you have any more info on that? Do you have more Google skills than I do? So the conservation of characters it comes into effect. And Warden Economos was, uh, let's see, I did write it down. Yeah, so John Economos was, first off, voiced by Brandon Vietti, so that's magical. And second off was a character from the original, not original, but the newest version. Oh, that's not true either. (laughs) Because the original version of the Suicide Squad was in 59, but the start of the modern version was 87, and the warden economist was a character in there specifically tied to task force X, which also makes me laugh a lot because it's like, does that contextually mean that Brandon will have more lines in the series? If so, that makes me very happy. Oh, I would. Yes, (laughs) please. So that's, that's good and interesting to know. It's one of those things that Young Justice does where they'll just name a character and give you no context. And you're like, well, but who? I have questions. Uh, yes. Similarly, in this in this audio drama, we have Clayface is back uh, and apparently trying to be a good guy now, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, and I hope we see more of that because that's really cool. And I feel like awesome. I can't think of another DC property that's done that one. No. It's because Young Justice is a living world and I love it. Um but the name he's going by now is Harlan Matthews. Is that a reference to a specific character? Or is that just a messing around and moving about of his usual names or what? So I couldn't find anything. I mean, first off, like we're also already using the name of the second Clayface, not the first um, for, his main, for his main name. But this one, any person from that had the last name of Matthews, was either tied to Gotham or tied to Gog um, and getting the powers of a god. So, I don't know. Are you telling me that for once a name might not mean something? No, I am telling you only that we don't yet know what it means. Fair enough. And as 
as my final note, uh, in all caps, near the very end of the audio play, like the big actual like news for season four gets dropped, which is that Artemis is team leader now. It's, uh, my notes here that I forgot I wrote simply say a queen. It's what she deserves. Yes. And I stand by that. Uh, Artemis is team leader is... A fantastic idea, not one of the ones that crossed my mind back when, like, post-season two, people were trying to figure out who would be the next leader. Did not cross my mind as a possibility. But now I'm like, yes, of course, all of season three is her, like, helping and instructing and teaching a bunch of young heroes how to be good at being heroes. And she's, like, the one person who wasn't involved in, like, all of the lying of season three. Yeah. Who is also like simultaneously good at being that job, <laughs> who has like enough experience, wasn't part of the crazy lying subplot. Yes. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm hyped for Artemis as team leader. And apparently Arsenal's back too, and that's cool. Yeah, sure, yep. whatever. But Artemis is team leader. <laughs> it's so good because it also like the idea of like that turmoil of going back and forth between like should i go back into the life should i not go back into the life i mean clearly you you lose wally because that choice is to step back into it and then you don't know what you want to be you don't you're am i tigress now and is that the role i should be playing what does it look like and then you're just like I, never mind i'm all in i'm the team leader <laughs> but at the same time i feel like this is kind of a really good place for her to be on that with that whole like struggle that she's been going through for a couple of seasons we've kind of seen that like team leader of the team in more recent incarnations of it in the more recent seasons kind of is a step back isn't always like 100 percent in the middle of conflicts all the time so it kind of makes sense as kind of like a role for her in some ways of like you want to be part of the life and you want to be doing things and you want to help, but you're not necessarily going to be the person who's running into a firefight every time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you are the person coordinating from afar. <laughs> Lobbing an arrow on occasion. Yes. She's also, she's a distance fighter. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Arsenal's back too. To give him his credit, Arsenal is apparently going to be back in season four, it seems. And, on the team again and because what is the team without a roy of some kind uh, yes <laughs> though i do help i do hope that everybody's uh in universe claims that arsenal has mellowed out and is is better now is true uh because i don't i don't really want season two arsenal who is a disaster man running with the team i would prefer prefer yeah. arsenal to be a little more chill <laughs> hopefully Hopefully, we need to get him some superhero therapy and have him not just immediately shoot things with his laser arm. And then I had thoughts of like, oh, man, like, how's that arm functioning? We're years later. Oh, my gosh. Did Cyborg upgrade it? Neil, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're when you're a superhero who knows like some of the best robotics engineers in the DC universe, because they're mm -hmm. all superheroes. <laughs> I feel like your cybernetic arm is going to be okay. Yes. So, Neil, what are what are your notes now that I have gone through my nonsense and my genuine commentary? Perfect. Um, so we were already talking about Stephanie, um, but Stephanie's like slight disdain for being the computer is always a real joy to me. What do you mean? She always brings it up. She's like, and the computer. That's even the bumper we have forewhelmed from her. Where she's like, I play <laughs> I play Artemis and the computer. <laughs> I've never read it as disdain. I just think it's fun to throw out there as like, yeah. I am one of the main characters of this superhero show. I'm also the announcer. <laughs> I also say people's names when they enter a scene. <laughs> yes. All of them. All the time. Uh, um, and then of course our first timestamp has a 16. Uh, there's not a lot through here. It's mainly just placating me through timestamps. <laughs> so one of the other thoughts I had, and, and I do agree with the context of like certain voice actors not being there, but I also always think about the missing time that came back yeah. to be this monumental thing. Yeah. So the idea of like, what is Nightwing doing? 
is one. Getting himself is, into trouble. Well, first off, yes. Uh, the other is Zatanna's protégés. That is not a singular, that is a pluralized word. So and Tracy 13. Yes. And? The, the, my exact thought process. I'm trying to think, was there anybody with magic like introduced in season three as like a background anybody? No, I'm like, not that I know of. Not that I know. Of. Like, because I was trying to think, I'm like, we see a lot of meta kids. Yeah. But like, they're all addressed as like meta kids, as kids mm-hmm. with like, oh, I control the wind because mutant powers. No one's like, hi, I'm a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> but man, would I have been excited by someone introducing themselves and their powers by, hi, I'm a wizard. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I agree. <laughs> Next, and it's just like you go to the the Taos Meta Center, and it's just kids being like, "Hi, I'm Billy. I can I make fire." And you get to the end of the line, and it's some kid who's like, "Hi, I'm Neil. I'm a wizard." And you're like, "What?" And then it just wizard stuff happens. <laughs> Whatever wizard stuff means, but yeah, no, I agree. Proteges multiple is suspicious as heck. Yes. And there, I mean, don't get me wrong. There, there are certainly a, a lot of characters that it could end up being, but then who and why? Because a lot of them end up being like really powerful out of the gate. Um, so, like, how does like what's the status of fate? Was my first thought. Constantine, there, and just there's just so many things because the yeah. magical rabbit hole that is DC is is yeah. very interesting. Because like I'm trying, I was trying to like go through my mind of like ones that are teenage sidekicks or like could be teenage sidekicks without it being weird. Uh, mm-hmm. I add with a question mark because like Constantine would be a cool character to kind of throw in the middle of Young Justice, but I cannot see him being a teenager. They cannot yeah. throw teenage Constantine into this. I feel like that would just be weird. There's, yeah, no, a lot of them, a lot of them just are older, like older yeah. characters. So I don't know that we would receive younger versions and we certainly could but yes proteges well that's that's an interesting one for the future we shall see we shall see what season four brings yes so then i I, so we always talk about the original team and i'm gonna be honest like it, it it felt so removed i'm like who counted like who counted as like team zero and it it is like it is interesting because it does feel like like a timeline thing so then year zero, whoever joined the team in year zero, yeah. th- they count. So then um, Rocket was the last addition there. And then like that line of like just basically counting Wally and having to uncount Wally. Oh, yeah. That was not as enjoyable as, <laughs> as a lot of this other the rest of this was. I feel like the the team the team time the mine is like if you were there for the New Year's shenanigans you're you're part of Team Year Zero. Mm-hmm. Were you on the Watchtower when we had to fight our mentors? You count. Yes. Well, so Dick, Wally, Calder, Connor, McGann, Artemis, Satana, Roy, and Raquel. Yes. So that gets our that gets our group. And so I'm hoping like I would love an entire season focused on that group. Yes. I don't know. I don't, I mean, obviously in the DC, DC world at large, the DC universe at large, but contextually, like I would love to follow those closely. Like I get it. I love that the show throws a million characters at us and I love seeing new teen heroes, but I know me and a lot of people were like, okay, but what, what about, what about our team from the beginning? We like them. What are, th- are they all okay? Yeah. Can we focus on them for five minutes? Please. <laughs> Please. So we'll we'll skip some other things because I think we covered most of it. But I will bring up once again because we had a little bit more context for this um, that we hadn't before. But missing A designations bother me so <laughs> much because at one point Vandal Savage had an A designation. So we jumped to 45. Yep. And there's like a 15 gap like 15 person gap in there and there's still an unexplained like 10 person gap prior to that (laughs) it's just there to drive you off off the just makes me so uncomfortable like who are those extra 25 people yeah because like i think 
they have a st- like a designation is for people who don't fit into any of the other designations. They're not on a team. Yeah, they're not authorized like guest. What? Yes, they're they're guests, and it just makes you like forty five different people. <laughs> We've had forty five different people. Who are the rest of them? Over the span of the league itself, and I guess I mean you know we could probably. I mean I'm not going to do it right now. That's for sure. But we could definitely get some sort of a timeline because A01 is Snapper Car. And yeah. you can look at that from the tie-in comics. And we're not getting through an episode without saying, and from the tie-in comics, <laughs> you, can, you can see of like roughly when he was there and involved. And he was the first of 45. So it's over quite a few years, but it definitely ramped up recently. But it's like, I feel like back in, back all the way back in season one, uh, I feel like when Vandal Savage had an A designation, it was still like in the single digits. And now it was low. Yeah. Yeah. It was still really low, despite the fact that the Justice League had been around for several years and stuff and everything. Uh, and then now we're we're here, season 3.9, and it's like 45 people. Figure it out. <laughs> no. Guess. Ugh, I don't like it. What I do like, though, and I've seen a little bit, and I really hope there's just a like overwhelming amount of fan art for this new bow hunter team. There's already been a little bit. I've seen at least one yeah. going around Twitter where somebody drew the whole team. Mm-hmm. I want, yes, I want just nonstop bow hunter security fan art. I feel like I've seen, like, people have cosplayed it, and now I really mm-hmm. hope that, like, people <gasps> who do any of the yes. characters, like, make... <laughs> Like me, they're like, well, I already have the wig, or in the equipment. Like I already have the wig, I have the bow, I have uh, everything. So just you just buy like blue slacks and a blue button down shirt. You make a patch. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I like it. No, I love it. Ne- whenever cons return, I want to see all the bow hunter security. Yes, you. We have time. So the other thing is Bayou Bartholomew. Is an actual place. Yeah. First off, it is at timestamp 1616. So thank you for that. Also, speaking of things that bother me, like I try and read into things too much ever since we got uh, Wally's death date of 620 as a contextual numeric. Yeah. So I try not to do that. But it is the lar- It is the longest bayou in the world, meandering approximately 364 miles. Um, and I thought Rich would appreciate this because it contains over 100 aquatic species. I don't know. Now you know more real world things, which I try and figure that out. Because like, so Star City is apparently in California in this version of the DC universe. Yes, I think. So. Yes. Yeah. I was like trying to piece it together for a second. I'm like, yes, because it's right near where Wally and Artemis went to college uh, and all of that. And that's in California. Yeah. And then the whole thing made me like, once I found this, like is a bayou that actually exists. And then I can also think about the fact that they started in Happy Harbor, Rhode Island. I'm like, if a bio, if a bio ship leaves Happy Harbor, Rhode Island going 60 miles an hour and a Manta ship leaves California, I was like, of course they'd get there faster. So yeah, I don't know. Sometimes I can't stop my brain. The last note that I have is that the Suicide Squad has once again, for the second time, requested the help of Rick Flagg and been denied by Waller. So I don't know what he is doing, but apparently he's been doing it for years. He's busy. (laughs) Yeah, because she... Well, and then also the implication of their potentially task. Force X, is there another task force that's then operating? Because if he's busy transporting others, like how elaborate, because if you think of like, is this the, if you had like necessarily like the light versus the league, like is the suicide squad versus the team, like how elaborate is Waller becoming with this over time? Yeah. Like where my brain went. All valid. Mm -hmm. We will, we will just have to wait and see. These are all of the things. Then, uh, so that's our general thoughts on the audio play specifically. But then in like the week, (laughs) the week since the audio play happened, I'm almost kind of happy that we delayed this a little bit. Me too. Just so that we have a little more to talk about. Some general things that have been announced recently. One of them that everybody, I think everybody probably knows by now, DC Universe is becoming DC Universe Infinite or Infinity, Infinite. 
right? Mm -hmm. Infinite. Thank you. And that is going to be a purely comics website, purely comics streaming site, kind of like the the Marvel Unlimited type of thing that I know a lot of people use. And all of the DC Universe originals, including Young Justice, are going to be moving over to HBO Max. And I think there's... Those of you who are DC Universe subscribers and all of that probably got the email and there's like a bunch more information in a recent email about like how to switch your subscription and save money or something. But yeah, be aware for those of you who don't know and who maybe never used DC Universe. I don't know. I don't know how that would be possible. If you're listening to us talk about the show, you would have had to watch the show somehow. Netflix. If you're in another country. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) It's like, what do you mean? Oh, right. But now it'll be on HBO Max, which hopefully more people will be able to watch and see and watch whatever else is there. I don't know. I don't actually know what's on HBO Max. Um, Yeah, that's there's a lot. I mean, it definitely as time has gone on, streaming services have certainly gotten more complicated about who's with who, who owns what. Um, So that's why all of this is happening. I know that when we look at the whelmed world, uh, and and myself included, like sometimes we get hyper-focused on what we absolutely love and adore, but then you start to move up those layers in that chain and it just gets much more complicated, um, that pay scale and how things are happening. So that's, that's to say like, if I had Hulu and I bought the HBO package, would I then get it? Or is it only if I get Max? So there may be just that's to say, just really look into it and see where you would get your Young Justice fix from. Because there could be a lot of avenues, a lot more now, a whole lot more now that it's going to be with HBO um, rather than the exclusive service that was DC Universe. Yeah. I feel like nobody's really surprised by the change that much. Like, I'm not necessarily happy about it, but I feel like even when DC Universe was first announced, people were like, this is going to get complicated and probably get absorbed by something. Everybody just didn't know what. Uh, And now we know what. Uh, And hopefully it works out. I will see. We'll see how things go. I'm just glad that Young Justice has somewhere to be. (laughs) And hopefully more people watch it there. Even though a ton of people watched it on DC Universe, I hope even more people continue to watch it. Yeah. So to bring up Ariel again, a conversation I was having with her, and this may be one of the benefits of HBO Max. So I want to throw that out there because here at Wound, we're all about positivity, <laughs> is the idea that that release schedule won't be as chaotic because in the original, in, originally they were fitting such specific time frames to fill out their very specific exclusive content release schedule at DC Universe. So you had the divide, you had this many episodes for this week because we're trying to fit it in X number of weeks so that we can then start this show to go to this show. If it's HBO Max, I kind of see it as one of two options, either weekly releases or big old release. Like those are kind of the two. I would think, and I know a lot of us may like the idea that it would be weekly releases yeah i would i would prefer that and i know i know i saw ariel's tweet about it now like those of us who make content about young justice are like weekly releases are good because it means we can divide up our work easier uh but i also agree with the people who've been like if you drop all of it at once that means it's gonna get watched and talked about and then not talked about very quickly and i feel like that's not conducive to the young justice viewing experience if that makes any sense like i feel like young justice is better when you have to wait between episodes yes you just get to theorize and freak out about it versus like young justice where you watch it all back to back to back you're like okay all of my questions were answered immediately Uh But we'll see. We'll see. We can hold out hope. And similarly, also related to the HBO Max in the email, I think it's been getting shared around from that promotional email talking about HBO Max coming out. It says that season four is coming in 2021, Mm -hmm. which but doesn't say anything else. Uh, And we don't have a release date. And I feel like Anything that doesn't come as like a big announcement, I always add a little grain of salt to because I feel like sometimes things just get said as like a footnote and then later might be walked back. But we'll see. I wouldn't be surprised if it's 2021, but I also don't want to be like, definitely. And then 
you know, have something be like, no, we had to push it a little bit more, especially given the state of the world. Yeah. And someone had done the math on the original green light um, announcement of season three compared to its release date. Yeah. And so if using those as context, then we would put uh, the release of se- potential release. And these are random theories. Please take these as random theories based on pure numeric speculation. Based on pure math. <laughs> yeah, pure math that has nothing to do other than the math is that it would be around September. But the idea, but yeah, there are so many factors. Yeah. But we will see. But related to that, I know we recently saw Greg Weissman uh, tweeted recently, just a couple of days prior to when we're recording this now, that they have 24 scripts done, uh, that they've fully recorded 20 episodes, and that they've partially recorded three more episodes. But that, of course, only takes into account writing and recording. They still, as far as I know, haven't animated anything, or at least not fully animated anything. I'm sure storyboard artists and everything have been working around the clock and all of that. But like, that's this is what we know. They have 24 scripts out of 26, I think, is the mm-hmm. full season number yep. done. 26. Uh, and 20 episodes recorded, which is good. That's a lot, especially, again, given the state of the world, everyone is working from home, and I am very impressed by everyone doing that right now. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. Yeah, but like you said, storyboard and background are certainly still happening. Yeah, yeah. So then it is just the actual animation production, then it has to come back and then sound has to be added by the amazing team who I assume is on season four again. Yeah, we'll wait and see. We'll find out. But speaking of season four, season four's title has officially been confirmed as Phantoms Mm -hmm. Thoughts? Question mark. Oh, man. Is it the past haunting you? Is it basically that you're working in a more secretive nature is it that like uh, are they just ghosts because you have more people using magic i don't know it's like is it a metaphor or are there ghosts (laughs) yeah or is it phantom of the opera are we just going to kidnap a young soprano (laughs) hi yeah theater jokes for (laughs) for the part of the audience that understands my nonsense (laughs) yeah because they try and think about you had invasion, which in the end, like that becomes pretty self-evident. And then you have outsiders, outsiders. which again, that becomes pretty self-evident. And then you, so you have phantoms. And so does that, I mean, you only have these two title card title cards previously. So then like, I, I, we just went both directions. Like, is it phantoms that we're dealing with like invasion or is it the phantoms like the outsiders? I don't know. Or is it a mysterious third option we haven't considered yet? There we go. That is the most likely version of this. Yes. I I would absolutely be up for like Secret coming back from season one because we referenced her last season. We referenced Secret again. And I'm like, mm. hmm. she's yeah. in the she's she was in the original Young Justice comic books as like a character. So I'm like, this would be wild if four seasons in we bring back secret or anybody i know a lot of people have been like phantoms wally (laughs) just that knee-jerk reaction of everything is wally and i'd be up for any of that i i'm just excited i don't know what's happening but i'm excited (laughs) one thing i just thought of is what if secret was one of zatanna's protégés I've been thinking that since you brought up protégés plural and was Mm -hmm. like, if I say this, I'm going to sound like I have no idea what I'm talking about. That's just wild speculation. But seriously, like that would be amazing. (laughs) If Zatanna's just training the small ghost child, I would I would love it. Well, and then always with Wally. So my thing is like, obviously, like, so that was my favorite character. So that which is fine. So my thing with that is I implicitly trust Wally with, of course, this amazing team. If Wally comes back, it will be fantastic. If Wally doesn't come back, it's because they didn't figure out a way to bring him back and it'd be fantastic. Yeah, but (laughs) it's the thing. I don't know if we have a clip of it anywhere from anything, but like we've had conversations. We had like our conversation right before going on DC Daily one time where Hector Navarro asked all of us, like, do you think wally is alive like just kind of casually before we started recording oh, yeah. and all three of us went oh yes totally and he's like 
But they said, like, this season, they had the whole thing about, like, insisting that he was dead and he was a ghost. And, blah, and I was like, and all three of us were just like, no, that's what convinced us he was alive. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, or that he will come back or whatever. Because we just, we have our own off the wall theories about uh, what's up with Wally and we've discussed them everywhere. But yes. Yeah, no, we will see. Maybe Phantoms is Wally. Maybe Phantoms is secret. Maybe Phantoms is anything. We have no context yet. It's that thing where they like announce it. Like it's like big reveal. The season title is this. And we're all like, we don't know any more than we did a week ago. (laughs) Yep. It's the one thing you can announce that will make everyone freak out, but tell us absolutely nothing. Yeah. These cast members are here, you know, in real, in, like if you think about the idea of like them having played different roles of just like, uh, yeah, Calder's not in it, but Black Manta is. So there you go. And you're just like, wait, what? I know when they first announced that they were doing the audio play and they announced like the actors that were going to be there, there was some part of, I know me and some people were like, well, they said it's a new episode, but they never said it was a new like post season three episode. Like they have Jason Spizak there. Maybe he's oh, playing yeah. Wally. Maybe it's like a throwback to like season one. Maybe it's like a between season one, season two episode. Like we're just going off the rails and then like oh, the so episode starts and it's like Jason Spizak playing Forager. And I was like, oh, right. <laughs> Jason plays five characters too. Mm-hmm. I forgot. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just. That's just how we roll. <laughs> Tin foil hats for everyone. Yes. But I think with all of that, now that we've talked about everything under the sun that we have been able to cover, uh, I think that we can all Zeta out of the Watchtower. So thank you for spending some time with us today for our Intel update. If you'd like to join us in discussing this incredible series, you can find us on Twitter at the YJ Files, on Facebook at Crashing the Mode, on Tumblr at the YJFiles.tumblr.com, on our website, CrashingTheMode.com. And if that isn't enough for you, you can email us at whelmedpodcast at gmail.com. And you can also find us on YouTube, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, everywhere you listen to podcasts and if you'd like to support our show please consider sharing it with a friend joining our chats on social media and as always you can support the show by giving us a five-star review and or rating on apple podcasts or your podcatcher of choice and as always the ratings and subscriptions help others find the show and if you do leave one let us know by email especially if you live outside the u.s because those are much harder to find If you are able to support us monetarily, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash crashing the mode. Even $1 a month can help us do in-person interviews when those become a viable thing we can do again, actual play podcasts, fan meetups when those become a thing that is possible for us to do again, discussion sessions, and just a bunch more stuff. We've just got a lot of, and there will be new things there when we can update our Patreon because we have new things things we want to do that we haven't done yet and remember to vote this year it's important remember to do that and remember to stay whelmed (laughs) perfect you've been listening to whelmed the young justice files podcast our hosts are rich howard and emily booza our editor and producer is neil powell our theme was composed by emily mio Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening and stay whelmed.